<clears throat> Hello, guys. Hey, Carol. Hi, Kitty Green Tree. Oh, Chords06. Got to remind me of your name. And Shelly, good to see you too. I got to remember that. Oh. Hey, guys. Uh, what am I? Mm. Hi. All right. People popped in. Abby. That's right. Abby. Good to see you. Well, I'm Mary at Not Before Seven. You can find my blog on Facebook or my blog or here at Periscope. I'm a homeschooling mom of four and I am participating in the Brave Scopes Challenge. This is day two and we are to share our favorite Christmas stories. So um, I thought I would do that real quick tonight. I had so much fun watching a lot of the other ones shared today. I actually literally sat with my iPad playing the Periscopes and my laptop opened to the library website and I was just typing in every title as we went. So it was fantastic. So it was inspiring for me to take a moment and to go up to my shelves and find my favorites for you. So here we are. This is hard on the iPad because the camera is over on the side for me to look at you all, but it's over on the other side that I get information and comments. So if I look like I keep looking off to the side, that's why. So here is my first favorite. This was actually a gift, I believe, from my mom. And it is called The Snow Angel. It's just a lovely book with beautiful illustrations um, about these two little mice who find a swan that is frozen in the snow. And they help the swan, they give her food, and she ends up rewarding them with beautiful feathers that they make a nest. Um, this is actually, my daughter saw it and she thought I was selling it because she's always worried when I gather things in front of the camera. She thinks I'm posting them on Craigslist and she kind of freaked out. Oh, I love that book. So I'm gonna show you just a little bit of the illustrations here that I love. Um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the glitter, but this beautiful snow angel, um, you can't see it real well on the iPad, but these feathers, there you go. These feathers are sparkly. So that little touch of glitter with this beautiful white is just lovely. So the little mice meet her and they bring her food. And in the end, she is feeling better. There she is. And again, those, these are all glittery. And she rewards them with some feathers that fall as she's flying away and they end up using it to keep a little shelter. So it's not necessarily about Christmas, but it's snow and um, it's Christmas time in the book and that is why we love this one. So that is my first one. Of course, I don't think it would be Christmas without a nutcracker and this is one of the versions that we own. I think it's so fun to listen to the music. Um, if you have access to the classical kids CDs at your library, Tchaikovsky Comes to America has a lot of the Nutcracker in it. I highly recommend Tchaikovsky Comes to America. It has the coffee song and the tea song and he's on a train the whole time. They're about 30 minutes and the classical kids CDs are absolutely fabulous. But this particular version of the Nutcracker I like. It's not really long. Um, it's a simple story and um, the kids really enjoy it. So of course, turning on Nutcracker music would be a great way to spend a tea time in which you read the Nutcracker. For Tea Time Tuesday, if you do Tea Time Tuesday, do some poetry, maybe do a Nutcracker story and fill your home with the Nutcracker music. So that is my favorite Nutcracker book. Let's see, I'll show one more picture from there. Um, just a great picture of the Nutcracker. And my final one is my favorite. I actually cry when I read this book to my kids. This is my absolute favorite Christmas story, and that is The Tale of Three Trees. It is a traditional folk tale, and it is beautiful. So the basic story is that there are three trees, and they are all on the mountaintop 
and they're talking to one another and they all have dreams of what they will become. So hello, hello to Dana. Oh, if you've never heard of this, take a screenshot, definitely look this up. This is a beautiful story. So this one is a Christian book. Um, just so everyone knows, it's a beautiful book though of selfless giving and it, it is. So they all are dreaming on the mountaintop and the first star, or the first tree says he wants to hold treasure when he grows up. He wants to be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. The second tree wants to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. And the third tree um, doesn't know what he wants to be at all, but he wants people to look at him and raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. He wants to be the tallest tree in the world because he thinks that by being tall, people will think of God when they look at how high he is. They will think of the heavens. I'm glad both your kids like it, Carol. I love it too. Um, well, one day the woodcutters come and they cut down all three trees. So the first two are really excited because now's their chance. They're going to be a treasure chest. They're going to be a ship. But the third one is devastated because he just wanted to stand tall on the mountain and point people to God. Well, of course, the beauty in the trees is that the first one, I'm giving away the ending. I'm sorry. But the first one becomes the cradle that holds the baby Jesus. So indeed, he holds treasure, the most important treasure. The second tree does become a ship to hold kings, but not in the way he thought. He becomes the ship that Jesus is on when he calms the storm. And he knows at that moment that he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. <clears throat> the third tree is very angry because it's been turned into wooden planks and forgotten in a warehouse. And then the third tree is carried through a jeering crowd, angry people. She felt ugly and she felt harsh. But the third tree had no idea that it was the cross. And so in the end, the third tree stands on the mountain. And every time people look at the third tree, they think of God. So in that way, all three trees' dreams were fulfilled. And I didn't get teary-eyed because I'm not reading it. But when I read that one out loud to the kids tomorrow, I will get teary-eyed. It's a beautiful story. So those are my three favorite picture books. And I did think I would mention... Um, my oldest daughter, who does my Boomerang Book Club with me, we decided for December to do short stories. And I think a classic holiday short story, Christmas short story, is The Gift of the Magi. So I thought I would put that up there. If you type this into Google, you can find it free to print out. That is one of the four short stories, because I thought that was a really great one for the holiday time. And the basic idea of this one, if you haven't read it, it's a pretty popular short story, is that there's a very poor husband and wife, and um, they both just really want to get each other something nice for Christmas. So, again, I'm giving away the ending. So if you don't want to hear it, cut off the scope. And she ends up selling her beautiful long hair. Her, her most precious thing she has is her beautiful long hair, and she gets it chopped to sell it to get money to buy him a chain for his watch because that is his most precious item he owns and of course he ends up selling his watch unbeknownst to her to buy her these beautiful hair combs for her hair and so it's just a story of um kind of a sad twist but a happy twist that they both loved each other so much they sold their most prized possession to buy something for the other one so that's the gift of the magic so those are my favorite stories and um, this was great because it inspired me to go dig them out and get them out to read tomorrow so hi Lita good to see you live but I'm actually ending I'm about to hop out oh there's a Mickey Mouse cartoon on the gift of the Magi I will have to look that up see if it's available somewhere online so thanks for tuning in guys if you just popped in um, you can watch the replay. I just shared my favorite Christmas stories. I am about to pop back on because I wanted to, I know a lot of people have been getting freaked out by all the creepy people on Periscope who are following. And I just wanted to um, go over one way to kind of rid your bin of um, 
the creepy people. So hi Anna and Lita popping in. So enjoy the replay and I'm actually going to pop back on. So if you want to hear a little bit about ninja blocking the creepos and um, actually checking the followers of your followers, um, then you can pop back on. But if you've had enough of the blocking the creeps, then um, have a great night and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.